All right, it's uh, 7.05, I think we'll get started. Um, hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining the College Talk series. Um, in this series, we will have current and former students presenting about their college experiences every Saturday at 7 p.m. This is currently the ninth session, and this week we have Celine Chang presenting about Carnegie Mellon. Celine graduated from CMU and she majored in electrical and computer engineering. Thank you for taking your time to present about CMU. This presentation is being brought to you by Robotics for Youth, a nonprofit organization led by youth for youth with the aim of promoting STEM education. Along with these college talks, we also do STEM workshops, certification classes, hold virtual competitions, and much more. If you're interested in any of our other classes, visit our website, roboticsforyouth.org. During the session, all microphones will be muted. And if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to use the chat function at the bottom of the screen. Ritika and I will ask the questions to the presenter and they can answer. Now I'll hand it over to Celine to talk about her college experiences with CMU. Hi everyone, let me get my screen shared. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. So, okay. So these are the points that I'm gonna talk about a little bit today. Let's start off with like where I'm from, where I am at now. So I grew up in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Um, and I went to CMU, which is in Pittsburgh. And then after I graduated, I came to Nova. And now I work as a software engineer at Capital One. Some things I like to do in my free time are gardening, baking, and general music stuff. Okay, so going back to when I was in high school, um, here are just some things that helped me out when I was getting into college. So my high school GPA, I had a 4.0. Um, I don't remember weighted, unweighted anymore, but that was what I put on my applications. And uh, I would say something very important is the college essays. I'm sure everybody already knows that, but I really think that like spending a good amount of time before you actually sit down to write and just brainstorm some really key topics for you to write about is really good. Um, I took the SAT. I didn't take um, ACT, but SAT was enough for CMU um, when I was applying. Uh, CMU also takes AP credits, so that was very helpful with me bypassing some of the like intro level classes um, if you get a five. And then some extracurriculars that I did while I was in high school included um, like participating on National Honor Society. I did indoor and outdoor track all four years. Um, and I participated with Relay for Life as our school's team captain. And I had an outside volunteering opportunity with a Chinese music ensemble. Um, okay, so some advice I would say, like as you're doing all these things and you're preparing while you're trying to decide between colleges, it is really helpful to visit the school and like actually talk to people. So talking to people who are studying or doing other activities and see if you can feel like you fit with the culture there. Okay. So once I decided to go to CMU, um, it was really, really exciting freshman year, like showing up on campus. The very first thing that they do is, you know, you go to your dorm, you move in all your stuff with your family, and then orientation starts. So orientation was made up of a bunch of different things. Um, they would have these like speakers come, um, the president of the school talks, and there's like a bunch of fun events where you can socialize and meet new people. 
Um, so the photo I included on this slide is from our like dorm house wars. Um, I was dorming in Donner and Donner's like dorm colors was blue. So everybody's wearing blue and our mascot is a whale. So you can see the tail of the giant inflatable whale. There's like a bunch of um, competitive group activities. It was just a really fun time and a good way to get to know people. So as for campus life, um, the first year everybody was in a dorm and there's a variety of dorms for people that have different preferences. Like um, I chose Donner because I really wanted to be on campus, like right in the middle of things. And I also wanted a bigger room because some of the rooms were only big enough for like two bunks and two desks and that was it, like no floor space besides that. Um, that was really nice that I was able to look into that before choosing a dorm. Um, at CMU, you're able to do like a randomized house choice. Um, like they can randomize where you go and your roommate. But I decided to choose my dorm and also my roommate. I found her on Facebook. Um, there is a Facebook group that was created for the class of 2019 and we all joined it and you post like a little bio where you list, you know, your living style and what you're looking for. And you get like matched up that way if people read your bio and think that it would be a good fit. We also have like meal plans. Those are mandatory the first year. Um, and it's a block style kind of meal plan where you get a block that would include like a main, a drink and maybe a side in most places. We only have one location on campus that does like the buffet style. And if I remember correctly, it was not open all the time. It was like breakfast on weekends and then dinners every day. Okay. Um, I really want to emphasize socializing in freshman year just to like get to know all of the kinds of people around campus and to like meet people that you really vibe with whether they're in your major or not in your major, whether they're in like a club. Um, it's all like really good to do that. And studying, oh my gosh, I feel like in high school, I never really had to study that hard, but it was a real wake up in freshman year when they just give you so many topics to look at and the exams are much harder and the homeworks are harder. So yes, definitely studying was a big wake up for me. I touched on dining already. Um, as for recreation, there's pretty much anything that I personally would have been looking for. So they had like two fitness gyms. Um, one of them was close to my dorm. One of them was in the center, like main building on campus. There's a pool. There's tennis courts. There's also dance rooms for the many dance groups um, and individual people who enjoy dancing on campus. And there's also group fitness classes. Those are really, really great. Um, and I'm glad I took advantage of those while I was there. Are there any questions so far? Oh, we're good. Okay, I will keep going. Okay, so in general for academics at CMU, um, at least for electrical, computer engineering, and I believe engineering in general, there's the major course requirements where you have these like core fundamentals um, that you're required to take. And then they branch off into different specializations in the higher level courses. So you're able to choose um, any of the higher level courses, but you need to take the four major course requirements. And those were mm, signal processing, computer systems, um, circuits, and then hardware. So those are like the really only determined requirements that you have to take those courses. 
There's also the intro courses that you can take um, that are like calculus, physics. Um, and then there's a freshman level English course that you have to take. But you can place out of, I believe, all the math and physics classes with AP credit. But then everything else that is required, like, um, like culture and like language, you can choose whatever you want to fulfill those requirements. There, there's like a whole list of all the courses you can possibly take. It's really fun. I would recommend like definitely looking through the descriptions of all of the courses. Sometimes there's like really fun things that maybe not a lot of people have taken, but would be like really fun to try. So I mentioned studying being like a big shock coming into college, like actually needing to study. Um, I would go to office hours all the time. Um, there's usually office hours, like a majority of the days of the week, either with the TAs or with professors. And they're super helpful. Um, I didn't really figure that out my freshman year, but into my sophomore and then the rest of my time um, at school, I really, really used office hours. And also like, you know, making friends in your classes. Um, it's really great being able to study with other people and seeing like what their perspective is or how they think about things. Oh, I got a notification. Is that a question? Should I finish the slide first? Oh, no, it wasn't a question. You can go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So Undergraduate research is really, really big at CMU. Um, and I know like many, many other research universities, it's really big. So I would emphasize like asking about research opportunities and looking for whatever you're interested in. Um, I'm pretty sure that whatever you do have interest in, they'll have something. I would recommend looking early on, like as a freshman and being really persistent about um, getting the opportunity. It's a lot easier as you become an upperclassman and have more experience, but definitely recommend trying still as a freshman. I ended up getting my undergrad re uh, research opportunity with my higher level signal processing professor when I was a junior, but it can happen definitely when you're a freshman. On that note, like really, really talk to the professors um, you know, early on in the semester when they have office hours and people don't usually have that many questions, that is a really, really good time to go in there and just, you know, talk. Even if you don't have questions, you can go over your understanding. And during that time, you'll have time to actually talk to them and get to know them as a person. So, you know, by the end of the semester, they will remember who you are and you won't be just a face in the sea of students. All right, um, I think we got a question um, asking which factors most affect the admission decision in CMU? Oh, um, so for my understanding, wait, let me repeat the question back. So what is the most important factor when they determine acceptance at CMU? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, from my understanding, it's like diversity, diversity of background, diversity of thought, diversity of experience, um, if that makes sense. So like they don't want everybody to be cookie cutter the same person. They want um, like people that have something that can add flavor to campus. Yeah. Were there any other questions at this point? Uh, I think that's it for now. You can continue. Okay. Cool. So um, I tried a bunch of different clubs and groups while I was on campus um, my freshman year, but I stuck with this one club, which is FORGE, stands for Facilitating Opportunities for Refugee Growth and Empowerment. Um, I really, really liked this one personally because it was a very like individual connection 
that you can make in this club. So I had a partner, um, Gabby, who we would go and visit this family. Um, our family was from Malaysia and they had recently come to the U.S. as refugees and basically we would just go visit them and hang out and be friends. Um, we tried to like practice English with them. We like told them about, oh, if you want to go to the grocery store, you can use the bus, you can do this, this is how you can apply for a driver's license. Just, um, you know, trying to help them out and get situated here. And then um, starting my sophomore year until my last semester in college, I was the teaching assistant, not for ECE, but actually for the math department in Calc 1 and 2 for engineers. Um, there were other clubs that I tried, like, oh, the um, group for like Asian engineers, uh, also the acting groups um, and the stand-up groups, like stand-up comedy. So there's a lot of different things around and you can look for and try out any things that you like. People are really welcoming and they totally understand if you are like trying a bunch of stuff and end up not sticking with everything that you try. Okay. So beyond those extracurriculars, um, I really enjoy doing things like exploring the city. So a, a nice perk um, of being a CMU student, or really any college student in Pittsburgh, is that you get a bus pass using your student ID. So you can scan that ID and get on the bus and just go anywhere you want. Um, there are a bunch of really fun places to explore, like South Side, they had a lot of restaurants. And then the strip district, which has like multicultural stores and grocery stores, going up to um, the Duquesne Incline. Yeah, a lot of really fun places to go in the city. Um, I consider uh, studying with my friends to be part of my social life because we would like, you know, hang out, joke around, like joke around, sing karaoke, but we'd also be studying a lot of the time. Uh, so although I was an engineer um, and CMU is really, really well known for like CS engineering, um, it's also super, super big with drama and music. So going to a lot of the free concerts from the School of Music, those are really amazing. Uh, and a lot of times there'd just be like recitals from the students for their like semester requirements. And a lot of the drama productions were pretty much like Broadway level, at least what I thought <laughs> as an engineer. Um, and it's a lot cheaper than seeing a Broadway show. So yes, I definitely think there's a lot of cool things to do on campus and around the city. Um, as for free time, I spent a lot of my free time in my like last three years of college cooking and not having much time for other things. So it's like cooking, exercise, things to take care of myself. Um, otherwise I was very busy with schoolwork. But there were times when the schoolwork was a little bit easier, which is around like spring carnival time. That's when CMU does like a couple days off from school and we do all sorts of really cool things. There's like the buggy races, if you've ever heard of those. It's where um, teams like for the entirety of the school year until spring carnival will make these buggies, which are basically like little carts that are, I don't even know how to describe this shape, like a teardrop. And it's actually big enough to have a driver in there. So there's drivers and pushers, and they train and train and make their buggies up until spring carnival and then compete. There's also um, where a bunch of teams on school will also, <laughs> teams at school will create um, these like houses that they create from scratch and they have three weeks to do so. 
those are really amazing. Um, if you ever get to like visit before um, picking CMU or like applying to CMU, I would really recommend going around spring carnival time because that's one of the best times on campus. Finally, um, something particular to ECE is we have ECE day. And that's when like all of ECE professors and the staff put on like a, a show basically and all sorts of other fun activities. That's a real plus to being ECE. Okay, so in summary, uh, some advice that I have is that, yeah, college is a one-time experience. Even if you're still there in grad school, it's not the same thing. Um, but even though it's a one-time experience, don't work too hard and remember to have some fun. And I mentioned this earlier, but like really talk to people, talk to your professors. Um, it'll, be, it'll be really useful in the future and during your time there to have like really good connections. Um, and I think I mentioned this earlier too, but take classes that you think are fun and exciting, especially for the ones that are outside of your like specific degree requirements. Like for example, I took intro to jazz dance as a mini course once. Um, I took nature of language, which was really a fun <laughs> philosophy class too. So yeah, that's, um, all the stuff that I had to talk about. Well, thank you so much. Well, we have a few questions in the chat. Our first one is, is there integrated master, is there an integrated master's program at CMU? Yes, there is, there is. Um, so as long as you like complete your undergrad requirements and have like a certain GPA, I believe you can, it's like, pretty easy to apply and be accepted to the IMB program. I have a lot of friends that did that. Um, our next question is, are there any scholarships available? Yes, there are scholarships. Um, I personally didn't qualify for any of them. I think that the financial support is not as huge as CMU from what I what I know. They do have grants, like for people who do, do need the financial support and like after you fill out your financial aids, um, they do give some there. Yeah. Our next question is, what is the average class size? Oh, in freshman year, usually the average size could be 100 students, especially for like those big intro classes, physics, calc. Um, but as you go on by, I would say junior year, the class size should dwindle to like 20. And then by your last year, um, if you're taking like PhD classes or other grad courses, um, then it can be <laughs> anywhere from as small as like five to again, 20. So it's, I would say class size is larger freshman year and then decreases significantly once you become an upperclassman. Um, our next question, when do you choose your major? Oh, so I will speak for engineering. You declare your major at the end of your freshman year, but it is not that hard to change it um one intricacy of being ECE is that when you apply to Carnegie Mellon to the School of Engineering you can either end up as admitted for restricted or unrestricted and basically the difference is if you're restricted you can choose any of the engineering majors besides ECE otherwise you have to like reapply um but if you're unrestricted when you're admitted, then, then you can switch pretty freely. Of course, I wouldn't recommend switching a lot while you're there, but like for me personally, I came in as a mechanical engineer, but then after my first internship, which ended up being like kind of software-y, um, I decided to switch to ECE. And because I was unrestricted when I was admitted, I was able to do that switch pretty easily.
Um, our next question is, do you know of any internship opportunities near the college? Okay, hmm, I do. So there are research, ex research internship experiences offered by like Pittsburgh and the Carnegie Mellon itself. Um, Google has an office in Bakery Square. Um, which is not far from campus. I believe there are more and more tech companies showing up in Pittsburgh. For example, I think Uber, but that could be inaccurate at this point. Yeah, um, so there are some opportunities, but it's not super abundant. Um, our next question is, does CMU help with getting internships? Oh, with getting internships. As in, sorry, what does that mean? I think it means like, I don't know. Um, could the person who asked elaborate a little bit more? Thank you. Oh, I guess, um, I guess, oh, I see. So, uh, I don't know about posting internship opportunities. I know that there is a career guidance center and they would definitely have information. Um, they send out like emails and you can go there in person and they'll have postings. I personally didn't use that very much because it wasn't so accessible. But um, yeah, there are like talks and a lot of major companies will come in and do like interview workshops and resume reviews, all sorts of stuff like that. And you can take them to like the job fairs. So there's two job fairs, two major job fairs per year, one in the fall and one in the spring. Um, pretty much every major tech company and many other companies show up, um, like CMU is a big hiring school for a lot of those places. Yeah, I think there is guidance. Um, I guess I just never thought about it that much. You're welcome. Uh, if anybody has any more questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. So, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so I guess we'll wrap up now. Thank you so much, Celine, for sharing this information about CMU. Uh, next week, we will not be holding a, a session since it's the 4th of July holiday weekend. Um, we will announce the subsequent sessions as we finalize them. We also have our previous, previous college talks on our YouTube channel, roboticsforyouth.org. If you want to know more about our organization and our meeting schedules, you can visit us at roboticsforyouth.org. Thank you all for joining.